I would have thought it's Mercedes. All right. Well, about 40% of our electricity comes from burning coal. So the new EPA limits on carbon emissions will very likely affect energy prices and decisions by coal and energy industries. So what will those changes be, both for producers and consumers? For details, we turn to Myron Ebel, Competitive Enterprise Institute Director of Energy and Environment. Myron, thank you so much for coming. We don't know precisely uh, what these new rules are, or benchmarks, if you will, are going to be, but what, what is your best guess? that the EPA will propose uh, that the states figure out how to reduce emissions from existing power plants, both coal and natural gas, by a certain percentage, maybe 25 percent, uh, within uh, X number of years. But we don't know when the baseline will be and we don't know exactly how long out it will go. But what we do know is that we're now talking about not just coal, but also about natural gas plants having to make reductions in some way or another. Wow. So that, that is a huge, if 40 percent of, of the energy we get is from coal, you add in natural gas and you, you're, you're talking over 50 percent, right? You're talking about two-thirds, uh, and, and natural gas's share has been going up. So what EPA is talking about is, well, we'll let the states decide how to do it. Maybe they can have a, set up their own cap-and-trade systems like California has, like the Northeast states have, uh, but they'll have to figure it out. This will uh, essentially unite everybody, I think, uh, in, the, in the coal and natural gas states. Well, that's uh, very interesting because there had been some thinking that, well, the natural gas folks might think, okay, good, uh, my competitor coal will be hurt by this and I'll rise, but, but they, this may actually bring natural gas and coal producers together. That's right. The, the current uh, EPA rule that they're working on right now is new uh, coal and natural gas plants, and that really makes new coal plants impossible to build, and so natural gas is the beneficiary. Uh, this rule on existing plants is likely to uh, bring in everybody who uh, gets most of their electricity from coal and natural gas, and that's most of the country. How much, let's first talk about consumption, and not only personal consumption, but also uh, businesses that consume electricity, which is just about every business. What, what's going to happen to electricity rates as a result of this? Well, President Obama, when he was running for president in 2008, said that his plan would uh, cause natural, it would cause electricity rates to necessarily skyrocket. So uh, if you take him at his word, we're going to have much higher electric rates in the heartland states that produce most of our manufactured goods, and that will be m both manufacturers and consumers. So California already has very high electric rates. Uh, New England and New York already have high electric rates. But if you live in one of the states that depend on coal and with some natural gas as well, like Ohio and Indiana, the ind industrial heartland, you're going to start seeing uh, their economies looking a lot and more like California's. Well, of course, we're coming into an election season, not just for the midterms, but also looking ahead to presidential elections. A lot of coal-producing states have Democrats running things that aren't too happy about this because they know they could lose an election. Uh, is this written in stone? Is the president having said it and the EPA uh, putting out the rules, does that mean it's going to happen? Or could uh, folks in Congress and perhaps legal challenges prevent it from being implemented? There's a very serious question whether what EPA is trying to do will survive a legal challenge, which will probably go up to the Supreme Court. Also, if we get a, a Republican Senate after November, uh, there's a very good chance that the Congress, under a very arcane law called the Congressional Review Act, could try to block it. Although, if they do try to block it, then President Obama could veto that. But that would set up a very big political confrontation. But he was talking about, John Podesta uh, wrote a, a number of articles about, in fact, he wrote a, sort of a book about it, how through executive yes. authority, the president doesn't have to yield to Congress. He can do what he wants using agencies like the EPA. Yes, and John Podesta, of course, is now calling the shots in the White House. So we'll see how far that they, they can go. I think, you know, the American people in the Congress have been rather uh, lackadaisical about confronting this, uh, these assertions of executive authority without uh, Congress uh, giving uh, the yay or the nay. Yeah. Finally, if it implemented, we gotta, this has to be quick, what would be the overall effect? We know coal industries would suffer as a result of this, consumers would suffer, but what about the growth, the overall economic growth, which is already just kind of haltingly moving ahead? 
I think it will put people out of work and it will send manufacturing overseas. All right, that's got to be it. Myron Ebel, thank you very much from the Competitive Ener Enterprise Institute. And we are asking you on Twitter and Facebook if you think the EPA's new rules on carbon emissions from power plants will increase your electricity bills. Chuck has already weighed in. He says, yes, it already has. Send us a tweet or Facebook comment. Tell us what you think. Join the conversation. What do you think about the new EPA rules? at a FBN ATB. Lori? Looking to get your body beach ready? Yeah.